Hi, I'm Judith Roberts, and I serve as Director for Racial Justice in the Office of the Presiding Bishop. Juneteenth 2020 is filled with both pride and pain. Widely considered to be Black Americans Independence Day, Juneteenth celebrates the date of June 19th, 1865, when enslaved Africans in Galveston, Texas, learned from Union soldiers that they were free, two and a half years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Juneteenth is a time set aside for Black families to share memories and to come together as community. And I have very fond memories of many Juneteenth celebrations. From family fun days in the park with good barbecue, great music and dancing, to more formal galas recognizing Black brilliance and scholarship, to educational events that lifted up Black history and excellence, and to soulful Sunday gospel brunches that filled my spirit with praise and worship. One can only imagine the feeling of jubilation of formerly enslaved African people to no longer bear the chains of slavery, a bondage that existed in this country for 250 years. And when slavery finally came to an end, black families that were sold and separated set out to find each other. Wives reunited with husbands and mothers desperately searched to find their stolen children. And orphans became parts of extended families. The very first celebrations were church-centered events filled with worship, singing, dancing, and clapping. It included the remembrance of the ancestors that did not live to see the light of freedom. They must have included weeping prayers of lamentation for all the violent physical, psychological, and sexual abuse, and wailing for all the murder and maiming that a people witnessed. And for all the trauma, the healing power of collective community celebration witnessed to remember and to imagine a new future. Also included in the first Juneteenth celebrations were the readings of the Emancipation Proclamation. Considered an act of justice by President Abraham Lincoln, this document generated a sense of hope and belief that perhaps this nation would make good on its promise of the pursuit of life, liberty, and justice for all. One can only envision the energy in the life of my people set free in a nation that once held them in bondage, a nation that created a slaveocracy based on the ideology of white supremacy and black inferiority, a nation built on the labor and bodies of enslaved Africans and stolen indigenous land, that perhaps this nation one day would make good on its promise by repairing the breach and repenting of America's original sin of racism. And for a period of approximately 12 years without reparations, formerly enslaved people thrived during the Reconstruction era. Black men obtained political offices at the local, state, and federal level and created today's public education system. Black entrepreneurial women and men started businesses and created jobs, including the emergence of the Black press. With a passion and hunger for education that was denied to them during slavery, former enslaved African people built schools, historically black colleges, universities, and seminaries, and established all black townships. And within their spirit, they birthed a black Christian theology shaped by African spirituality. In reaction to black progress, a white nation that once held blacks in chains attempted to roll back these measures by instituting black codes designed to socially control black bodies. A new form of slavery emerged through the economic scheme of sharecropping and the convict leasing system that exploited the labor of black bodies. Separate and unequal Jim Crow laws in the South were implemented to control the black vote and to deny equal access in education all while racial terror rained down on black communities in the form of lynchings, race riots, and violence with impunity. The stain of America's original sin of racism did not go away with the end of chattel slavery. It just became embedded into other systems. 
for millions of Black descendants of enslaved Africans. This year's Juneteenth celebrations will be underscored by the continuing legacy of racial violence and trauma. The recent killings of Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Tony McDade, and Rashard Brooks at the hands of law enforcement and white vigilantes have become the headline news stories over the past several weeks. Psychologists warn that graphic videos of black death combined with daily lived experiences of racism can create severe psychological problems reminiscent of post-traumatic stress syndrome, also known as PTSD. For too many black Americans, many of us are emotionally struggling to process this constant trauma and fear for our loved ones and our communities. This experience of communal trauma coupled with the racial health disparities of the COVID-19 pandemic have taken a toll on communities. This year's celebration of Juneteenth holds both pride in the accomplishments of the shoulders on which we stand as Black Americans and the pain and the trauma of violence and anti-Black racism that still persists in this country. As mounting multiracial protests continue to grow and demand that America acknowledge that Black Lives Matter, I am reminded that at the heart of the Juneteenth celebration exists the values of hope, unity, and love. Encouraged by the resilience of African ancestors and the power of the Holy Spirit, may we awake from this nightmare and cast a new dream for this country. That rampant racial violence of daily news feeds will be no more for our children and our children's children. May this Juneteenth call us to reclaim the broken promises of a nation that is yet to fully honor the hopes and dreams of the slave. As followers of the risen Christ, may we continue to strive towards justice by ensuring that black lives actually matter. We must call for policy reforms and accountability in policing. We must confront America's history of white supremacy and its legacy of racism. We must study reparations and work collectively and intersectionally to end all forms of racism and oppression across this church and society, beginning here, beginning now, because we cannot wait. Amen.
are singing in the light of God. We are singing in the light of God. We are singing, singing, we are singing. Oh, we are singing in the light of God. We are singing, singing, we are singing. Oh, we are singing in the light of God. Celebration rises up from the deep places, finding voice in the light and air no longer denied. Lift every voice and sing, sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Celebration rises, not blind to the suffering, not blind to the sorrow. Celebration comes at a cost. Stony, the road we trod, bitter, the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, we have not our weary feet come to the place for which our parents sighed. Celebration rises. Remembering the way we have come, the paths taken that have brought us here now to this place and time of celebration. Celebration rises up and up, full of remembering. Remembering the ones led to freedom by Harriet. Remembering lives and freedom stolen. Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, Tanya Jackson, Jefferson, Charlena Lyles, Malik Williams, George Floyd, Stephon Clark, Tamir Rice, Emmett Till. We have come over a way that was watered with tears. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughter, out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Celebration rises, recognizing what has been done and left undone, knowing there is still and yet much to do, so much further to go. Celebration rises, naming the victories, recognizing the challenges yet ahead. Celebration rises on voices offering unfinished praise. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Celebration rises, resisting illusions to be embraced by the real and abiding presence of God who breaks our chains and sets us free for freedom in power and love and in joy. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, thou who hast by thy might led us into thy light, keep us forever in the past, we pray. Celebration rises with the power of healing wings and the promise to endure. Celebration rises, celebrating that by God's grace, I am because you are, you are because I am. Celebrating that the fullness of my humanity is not diminished by yours, and your humanity is not diminished by mine. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land, true to who we are, true to who we've been and who we are becoming. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil 
and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like those of generations before us, who resisted the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form and any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello, my name is Angel Swanson, and I've been asked to talk to you about my family's uh, libation or pouring out ritual. Uh, libation rituals for us, um, and I guess, and, and the reason we practice them is that they were founded upon the oneness of the universe and the relationship and the interdependence of all beings and all things. Traditional African libation ceremonies are ancient and practiced differently across the continent. Honoring libation ceremonies should not be confused with other pouring ceremonies like naming rituals or marriage ceremonies. Libations honoring ceremonies can be done alone or with others, but always with the right hand. Um, the purpose is to strengthen the connection that comes with the knowledge of spiritual connection or for spiritual unity with the Supreme One, with divinities, with ancestors, and or our physical environment. My grandmother taught me this ritual when I was small, and I've continued to practice it now for over 50 years. Um, so that this libation in our family is well, well over 100 years old. In my ceremony, which almost exactly mirrors my grandmother's, clearing uh, and cleaning, setting up of the altar space is the first part. And I've already set mine up. Uh, my altar tends to represent the natural elements. Um, my, I'll start with the eggs, the eggs which represent uh, eternal life. Um, there's, there are three for the Trinity, um, not just the Christian Trinity either. Uh, these eggs are made of banyan wood and are carved and uh, they're beautiful and they're extremely heavy. Um, also my, uh, my earthen urn, uh, this urn is made from sand. Um, and it is full of coral and other uh, types of, of elements from the sea. And so this is my, uh, my vessel for pouring out uh, my libations. And then my candles as well are set up. Um, for air, uh, the candles for fire, the, uh, the jug there for water, wood, which represents earth. And to do air often, I have my chimes, my wind chimes will be going uh, when it's windy, it's not windy today, so sometimes I will use my bells to uh, for sound to show air. Um, and so after I've set up my altar, I light my candles. And each candle represents an element as well. Let's see. Green candle for earth. Red candle for fire. Blue candle for water. White candle for air and my black candle, which represents the evil in the world and our acknowledgement that it exists and needs to be dealt with. I greet you today to acknowledge God, our source, our creator, the giver of life. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your blessings upon me and my house. To acknowledge the full presence of God with us. Source, Savior, and Holy Spirit. To acknowledge our ancestors the great cloud of witnesses, now one with God. To acknowledge the generations that fought and died and led us to freedom from slavery and persecution. Jim Crow laws and inequitable access to rights and resources in this society.
to acknowledge those who have led the struggles for freedom in recent times and even now. We name them with our voices and in our heart as we pour, thanking God. To acknowledge our children and our children's children, the generations of hope and promise entrusted to us by God, we pour in thanksgiving and hope. To acknowledge God, our source, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, our sustainer and counsel and comforter, the Holy Spirit. I will be reading the word from Sankofa. The West African spiritual proverb and teaching reminds us to go back and fetch it. Taking hold of our past, our history, in such a way that it becomes nourishment and guidance for journeying into our future. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Now I've been free. I know what a dreadful condition slavery is. I've seen hundreds of escaped slaves, but I never saw one who was willing to go back and be a slave. And those are the words from Harriet Tubman. Liberty is meaningless where the right to utter one's thoughts and opinions has ceased to exist. That of all rights is the dread of tyrants. It is the right which they first of all strike down. They know its power, thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers founded in injustice and wrong, are sure to tremble if men are allowed to reason. Equally, clear is the right to hear. To suppress free speech is a double wrong. It violates the rights of the hearer as well as those of the speaker. And those are the words of Frederick Douglass. A reading from Genesis, the 12th chapter. The time came when Sarah no longer had to nurse Isaac, and on that day Abraham gave a big feast. One day Sarah noticed Hagar's son Ishmael playing, and she said to Abraham, Get rid of that Egyptian slave woman and her son. I don't want him to inherit anything. It should all go to my son. Abraham was worried about Ishmael, but God said, Abraham, don't worry about your slave woman and the boy. Just do what Sarah tells you. Isaac will inherit your family name, but the son of the slave woman is also your son, and I will make his descendants into a great nation. Early the next morning, Abraham gave Hagar an animal skin full of water and some bread. Then he put the boy on her shoulder and sent them away. They wandered in the desert near Beersheba, and after they ran out of water, Hagar put her son under a bush. Then she sat down a long way off because she could not bear to watch him die, and she cried bitterly. When God heard the boy crying, the angel of God called out to Hagar from heaven and said, Hagar, why are you worried? Don't be afraid. I will make him the father of a great nation. Then God let her see a well. So she went to the well and filled the skin with water, then gave some to her son. God blessed Ishmael, and as the boy grew older, he became an expert with his bow and arrows. He lived in the Paran Desert, and his mother chose an Egyptian woman for him to marry. Word of God, Word of Life. 
Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Disciples are not better than their teacher, and servants are not better than their master. It is enough that a disciple be like the teacher and a servant like the master. If people call the head of a household Satan, what will they say about the rest of the family? Don't be afraid of anyone. Everything that is hidden will be found out, and every secret will be known. Whatever I say to you in the dark, you must tell in the light. You must shout from the housetops whatever I whisper to you. Don't be afraid of people. They can kill you, but they cannot do anything to your soul. Instead, you should be afraid of God, who can destroy both body and soul in Ganena. Aren't two sparrows sold for only a penny? But your Abba God knows when one falls to the ground. Even the hairs on your head are counted. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more than a sparrow. If if you tell others that you belong to me, I will tell Abba God in heaven that you are my followers. But if you reject me, I will tell Abba God that you do not belong to me. Don't, Don't think that I came to bring peace. I came to bring trouble not peace. I came to turn sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. Your worst enemy will be your family. If you love your father or mother or even your sons or daughters more than you love me, you are not worthy to be one of my disciples. And unless you are willing to take up the cross and come with me, you're not fit to be my disciples. If you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray with me, church. Liberating, loving God, open our hearts, free our minds to hear your word of truth. In the name of the blessed Savior, Jesus. Amen. I bring you greetings, church, from Emmanuel Lutheran Church. To all of you across the Northwest Washington Synod who are worshiping with us today, we say welcome to Emmanuel. We are an open and affirming, reconciling in Christ congregation who aspires to be anti-racist because we know it is a journey, not a destination. And as we celebrate this Juneteenth with all of you, we celebrate the freedom that comes in Christ the freedom that God has always intended, the freedom that we in our humanness keep finding ways to inhibit in others. Juneteenth is a 
celebrated in the African-American community as a day of independence. Uh, if you look for the t-shirts now, you will see them. Free-ish since 1865. Independence Day, crossed out. My people weren't free on 1776. We were freed in 1865. And so it is for, for me and mine. We know that the festival of nationalism that will be celebrated in a few weeks is not actually for us. But this, this is for us. This, this day of, of freedom. This day of freedom that even those who try their hardest to keep from us was still granted and could not be withheld. You see, that's God work. That's God power. When, when others try to block your freedom and you still manage to get it, that's God freedom. That's God liberation. But let me be clear. I don't want us to get confused about what we're calling freedom. I'm not talking about whether or not you wear a mask. I'm not talking about whether or not you get to have your hair cut this week, next week, next month, or three months from now. I'm not talking about whether or not you get to sing in worship or visit your grandmother in her nursing home. I'm talking about the freedom of life to live and be your true and most authentic self as God designed you to be. I'm talking about people of color who get to be their full self, uncensored, un unbridled, unworried about whether or not they're going to get this job because they decide to dress in authentic African garb or whether their name is going to stop them from being invited in for an interview or whether or not when the police pull up behind them if they're going to be able to go home today. Freedom. Freedom to be your full self. You see, in Genesis, Sarah tries to inhibit Hagar's freedom. Sarah is, is threatened by the fact that Hagar, whom she gave to Abraham to produce a child for him and did, might actually believe her own humanity. In the text, it talks about how Hagar begins to feel her authority as Eshmael grew in her womb. And she began to despise Sarah. Gee, I wonder why. To be impregnated by your master. How do you feel about the woman who set it up? I mean, it's only reasonable, I think, that Hagar would be upset, would begin to have some animus towards Sarah, that there would be some tension in that relationship. And so while some might want to read the text and speak about Hagar as becoming too uh, arrogant. I warn you, people, that your privilege is showing. Anytime someone who is deemed to be lesser than begins to feel equal, there's a problem. Sarah casts Hagar out. And Hagar is heartbroken 
unable to see clearly, think clearly, know what could possibly be next for her and her son. They'd been sent out with one bag of water into the desert. Death is the only foreseeable possibility. And so she sets her child down and goes a bit away because she cannot bear to watch. And the angel of the Lord hears their cry. You see, God doesn't let humans get in the way of God's plans for liberation. God promised Abraham that he would make of him many nations. Well, Isaac is only one nation. Ishmael is from whence we get many. Our Muslim Islamic cousins are all siblings of Ishmael and Isaac. Fulfillment of God's promise of liberation and blessing and intention for blessing of the whole world. God says to, says to Hagar through the angel, why are you worried? Don't be afraid. And then God let her see a well. Sometimes when life is so overwhelming, when all the pressures and the oppression and the, the doubts of the ways the world treats you begin to make you question your own identity, my beloveds, know this. God will not be thwarted. I say all of this as we recall more names than I can begin to count. Names of Black, Trans, Latinx, Indigenous peoples who die at the hands of the oppressor. Because we're actually only free-ish. My heart breaks and aches for the mothers, mothers who have to bury their sons, daughters, children, fathers who, who have to go on with life when the natural order of things has been disrupted. Yes, people of God. I am celebrating Juneteenth, but I am quite aware that I am only free-ish. You see, Jesus tells us the same thing that the angel told Hagar. Don't be afraid of people. Don't be afraid of what that one person can do to you. Instead, and here's where we need to do the little sort of biblical analysis, the word fear that Jesus utilizes here is really a play on that word fear in the previous sentence. Because you see, Jesus isn't talking about fearing God as in, oh my goodness, I'm afraid. But fear as in the trust, the love, the respect. I often tell people the story of my mother who was all of about five, four, <laughs> as we towered over her. But she commanded a certain fear in us. She used to say, watch your mouth. I paid for those teeth and I will take them out. I don't think that my mother ever would have 
laid a hand on me, nor that I ever actually felt that fear of physical abuse. But I knew, I knew in my heart that whatever she wanted from me was life-giving. It was love and fullness and freedom. And to go against her would be to go against my own well-being. And that is something I should fear. That's the fear that we need, people of God. You see, we are none of us free when any one of us remains in bondage. We are none of us free when any one of us has to worry about whether or not their beloved will come home from a run to the grocery store. There is a deep truth in the celebration of Juneteenth. For two and a half years, plantation owners in Texas withheld the information from those who they enslaved, perhaps so they could bring in another crop or two. Perhaps because the Union Army had not developed enough resources to come and make them set people free. Perhaps because they were just that evil-minded. Perhaps because in minimizing the humanity of others, they had lost their own souls. They too were not free. And so people of God, I would attest to you today that Juneteenth, Juneteenth is not just a celebration for the African-American community and the African diaspora. It is a celebration for all of us a recapturing of our very humanity by seeing, acknowledging, forced though it may have been, to see the humanity in each other. And that is something for which we rejoice. Because if you are not able to carry the cross of the pain and burden of your neighbor, you are not fit to be Jesus' disciples. That is our calling, to see each other, to know each other's pain, to know each other's joy, and to be liberated in that love. It is not going to be peaceful. Jesus promises that. It will turn you against your family members. There will be those who are way too uncomfortable with that kind of freedom being granted to those kind of people. But if we are to follow Jesus, if we are to count ourselves fit to be disciples, we must be prepared to seek out that kind of peace. A peace that disrupts the given order of things right now. A peace that changes how we view things. A peace that forces us to confront our own privilege, our own sin, our own complicity. People of God, I don't know if you are watching this sermon on Juneteenth, June 19th, or if you're watching it on June 21st. If you're watching it on June 19th, I hope you are celebrating joyously and that you will pay attention and watch and be a part of the Poor People's Campaign March that is happening on June 20th. 
the virtual march that can be found at june2020.org. But if you are watching this on the 21st, you have the opportunity to look back at the historic things that were said yesterday, at the ways in which black freedom was proclaimed and declared and embraced in the day before. You have the opportunity to be a part of it and to continue to dwell and rejoice in it. That is the peace of Christ. And so, may the liberating peace of Christ, which disrupts all of the status quo, flip your world upside down and inside out, and break the shackles that bind you to the oppressive systems of this world. Amen. Let us pray for our shared world. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your beloved one. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and the hatred that infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth. So that in your good time, every people and nation may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Christ in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Out of the chaos we cry to you, O oh God. Enable us to find in Christ the faith to trust your care, even in the midst of pain. Assure us that we do not walk alone through the valley of the despair, but that your love is leading us into life. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal and loving God, you created us in your own image and likeness, but sin has warped the minds of humanity, and throughout the world there is much injustice and much carelessness of the rights of other people, and personal responsibility. Forgive us as we continue to delay the liberation of peoples. God, when you are excluded from the hearts and consciousness of peoples, the inevitable result is that people suffer. Christ, there is much injustice and corruption taking place in our world today, not only in the lives of individuals, but also in the corridors of power and the council rooms of many nations and churches. We pray, O oh God, that you will right all the wrongs that are taking place in our world and vindicate those who are being treated unjustly. God, in your grace and mercy, we pray that you would give justice and peace to all those who have been cruelly and unfairly treated by fellow siblings and cousins, 
and may injustice and carelessness that they have had to endure be the means to draw them into your saving arms of grace. Christ, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. Christ, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Oh God, call us into a deeper relationship to be your church for the sake of the world. Help us to see with new eyes the injustices within church and society. And call us to have a loving heart that respects and uplifts the humanity and dignity of every person. Open our ears to listen and to learn from the experiences of people of color. Open our mouths to speak up and about injustices. Join us with others to work for racial equity and inclusion for all people. Christ in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this time of the pandemic, oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, Grant imagination and opportunity. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthen dreams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Thank you for giving us those who have shown us what a faith in you is truly about that guided our own lives in search of such a faith full of reverence and confidence in who you are, our Holy Father, ready to embrace us in your open arms. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we marvel in awe of the expansiveness of your creation. Your margins of diversity are boundless. And for that, we thank you, each of our beloved LGBTQIA brown and black siblings are beautifully and wonderfully made all in your image. Teach us to love people just as they are and embrace their identity fully as you have embraced us. Open our mouths to speak up about injustices. Join us with others to work for racial equality and inclusion for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for Barbara and family, Jayla and family, the families of James Sherlock, Manuel Ellis, George Floyd, Tony McDade, Malik William, Rachel Brooks, Breonna Taylor, Amon Aubrey, Travon Martin, Sandra Bland, Tamara Rice, Charlena Lyle, John T. Williams, Tommy Lee, Emmett Hill, and too many more hashtags. Asni, Alisa, Antonia, Ben, Betty, Carol, and Ken, Clara and family, Cynthia, Dorothy, 
Eldon, Emily, and Joe, Hannah, Jason, John, Liz, Mark, Mary Ann, Ron, Pearson, Susan, Fraz, Sal, Aaron and Belinda, Bree, Cindy, George, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. 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 Not a vain hope. Not a tempered faith. Not a dried eye love. Not an easy peace. But the peace of Jesus Christ abide with you and be known to you. And also, and also, also, with, you. You. also, also with, you. with you. And also with you. And also with you. And also, also with you. We gather our gifts for those in need and for God's mission for this church. You can send your gift to the church one of three ways. You can one, use the giving portal on the church's website, emmanuelseattle.org. Two, you could mail your gift to the church at 1215 Thomas Street, zip code 98109. Or you can call, call Candy in the office. That's 206-622-1930. She's there on Thursdays and she will help you set up a Simply Giving account for regular giving and your, um, that will be debited from your accounts. That kind of regular giving, that sustainable gift allows this ministry to continue, to be sustained and to do God's work and God's mission here where we are. We invite you to share your feedback with us, to uh, encourage us and to show who the body of Christ is present with us by sending an email to welcome to worship. That's welcome, the number two, and worship at emmanuelseattle.org. Or send a greeting, a picture of this short video, a peace sign, uh, a picture of your communion setup to peace at emmanuelseattle.org. Those pictures will be shared as we gather now to set the table, to prepare for the sacred meal. God's presence is not limited by internet. It is not limited by distance. God is present with us wherever the people gather. And we are gathered here. So church, pull together some bread, some drink, enough for everyone who is gathered with you. And let us prepare for a sacred meal by greeting each other with a sign of God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. Salam the peace of the Lord is with you. La paz del Señor es con ustedes. From Holy Spirit Lutheran Church, Kirkland, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. God's peace and health to all of you here in the Synod. Peace be with you. <laughs> One, two, three. Peace be with you. I'm Pastor Andy Arnold from Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church in Maple Valley. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. La paz sea contigo. Hi there from everybody here at Our Saviors. We want to say God's peace to everybody. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace to all of you here in the sand. Peace be with you. And also with you. From your siblings at Morning Star Lutheran Church and Monroe United Methodist Church. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace be with you. Peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 
My name is Maynard Attic, the transition pastor at Central Lutheran Church on Capitol Hill, and I wish to bring you all God's peace and blessing always. May God be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the midst of the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, uh, we know that we as a congregation want to have more discussions on uh, what to do next, what to learn next, um, and ways to act. So we would love all of you to show up to one of two conversations that we'll be having, one on Saturday, June 27th, June 27th at 10 a.m. and Thursday, June 2nd at 7 p.m. Um, via Zoom. Uh, and pl please RSVP if possible, and more information is uh, found in your bulletin. Pride weekend is next weekend. See the schedule and the links in your bulletin and in the Friday emails. Finally, Sunday server volunteers are needed. With worship being online, we are looking for uh, leaders who can put together pre-recorded worship services and special Zoom worship calls. Everyone is learning as they go, and training will be provided. Sign-ups are available in your bulletin or in your weekly email uh, by way of links. Have a good week, everyone. In this time, on this day, for love of God and love of neighbor, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the God who blesses us with these words, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Amen.
Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks. be, Thanks. 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 be God. God. Make sure to like and subscribe down below. And don't forget to tap that bell. See you next week. Bye.